Hello, it's Paul and Harry and some random sheep on the side of the Sugarloaf Mountain with our first video of the year and what a day. It's absolutely stunning up here. Uh, my car said it was about one or two degrees, which is beautiful. The sun is shining right in my eyes. I'll have you know, Harry, so you're making me squint. But it's absolutely stunning. We've got the Usk Valley behind us and the hills and oh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's a joy to be out here. And why are we out here? I hear you cry or not. Uh, I'll tell you why we're out here. We're out here today to talk about gloves. And those of you who are familiar with my videos will know that these are my favourites and that's why I'm wearing them. But today I'm not going to talk about gloves specifically as in, you know, individual models, etc, etc. We're going to talk about the gloves as a layering system for your hands. It's an often overlooked area uh, in outdoor equipment and we get asked a lot, particularly in the service centre in Hereford, what's the best glove for this? What's the best glove for that? Will it keep me warm here? Will it keep me dry there? So we just thought we'd put together a little video about kind of our own personal experiences of using gloves when we're out and about in the hills and the mountains, when we're walking or mountaineering, uh, just to give you just some little tips about how to keep your hands warm and dry and, uh, and working, because you're going to need them. You're going to need them to do zips, you're going to need them to blow a dog whistle, you're going to need to take the top off your flask, open a Mars bar wrapper, other chocolate sweets are available. Uh, you're going to need them to do all sorts of things, answer the call of nature, you know, that kind of thing. So generally speaking, when you're walking about and you're hiking or you're mountaineering, your hands are pretty much doing nothing. They're hanging around down by your side. They're exposed to the elements. And if, like me, you've got dirty, great, big, long arms, the blood has got an awful long way to go to get to your hands. And so they generally suffer with getting cold, especially if they are exposed to the elements. And also, your body, once you start to cool down, if you start to chill down, your body will automatically withdraw blood from your extremities to protect your vital organs. So your hands, your head and your feet are often the first places to feel the cold. And there's nothing worse than getting really cold, wet hands when you're out hiking. I'll tell you what is worse, actually. When you get back and you get the dreaded hot aches, you know when your hands come back to life and they, oh, that may hurt so much, they sting and they burn. So we're gonna give you a little walkthrough on a, a kind of a, a practiced and experienced led layering system for your hands. Right, let's start with uh, the base layer. Uh, those of you who are familiar with my uh, earlier video, my uh, seminal piece on the layering system, also filmed on this very same mountain. And we commonly refer to this as the wind chill factor. We'll know the basics of the layering system and the same thing applies to your hands. So the base layer, this would, uh, these would generally be lightweight, thin gloves uh, made of a high wicking material, sort of polyester, polypropylenes silks, merino wools, that kind of thing that you would put on at the start of the walk if you know it's going to be a chilly day. They will act to trap any warm air that your hands are producing. Now it's worth pointing out at this stage that gloves will work at their optimum when they are put on warm dry hands. So it's always best to try and preempt your hands getting cold by putting gloves on before they get cold and before they get wet. So like today, we've just parked up in the car park, we've walked up here. I know it's gonna be cold, I know it's gonna be chilly, so I'm gonna put my gloves on straight away, keep my hands warm. And if I was hiking, instead of stood here talking to you, I wouldn't have these big, thick, fleece-lined leather gloves on. I would just have a lightweight pair of gloves because I'm gonna be generating some heat, I'm gonna be generating some warmth, and the lightweight gloves are gonna be enough to keep the chill off my hands as I'm walking along. Okay, so that's your base layer. The so mid layer, much like in the clothing system. So in a clothing system, your mid layer may be um, a, a really lightweight insulated jacket. It might be a fleece, for instance. And the same applies with gloves. So in this case, for the mid layer gloves, we'll be looking to add some extra insulation on top of that base layer. So fleece gloves, absolutely perfect. Uh, they, your hands don't overheat so much because they allow a little bit of air permeability. You get some air movement through the glove. 
uh, they dry quickly if they get wet. Or you could look at uh, a very lightly insulated, synthet synthetically insulated glove that you're just going to pop over the top that will also give you a little bit of protection from the wind and light rain. So, uh, so again, let's take the scenario. We're walking up here, we're walking up the Sugarloaf and uh, my hands start to get chilly as we ascend. So I'd pull out my rucksack, I'd reach for my mid-layer gloves and they would go over the top of my base layer gloves. Again, thinking ahead, before your hands get too cold, once you start to feel that chill, get the gloves on immediately, get your hands warmed up again, get them working. It's very hard to get those fingers back from the numb state once uh, they've got too cold. So get your mid-layer gloves on, add a little bit of extra insulation to your base layer gloves to give your hands that extra warmth. And obviously, if you're starting to heat up and it's getting too hot, you can just take them off, put them in your pocket, put them in your rucksack. You can add them, subtract layers as you go through the day. But the trick is, is to keep building those layers to make sure your hands stay warm and comfortable throughout your activity. Okay, insulating layer. I've kind of talked about this a little bit in the mid layer, but this would be something a little bit heavier, definitely some insulating. I would count these gloves that I've got on here as an insulating layer glove because they are wool lined and they're leather, so they're not waterproof, so they add insulation. They're perfect for today. I mean, look at it. It's blue sky, bright sunshine, cold, chilly. These are the perfect gloves for this kind of condition. So your insulating layer would be gloves that have insulation in. Now again, that depends where you are. Up on the Sugarloaf, something like the uh, Montane Prism glove, glove would be absolutely perfect. It adds warmth without weight or bulk, and that can go over the top of either your base layer glove directly, or over the top of your base layer and your mid layer glove to add even more warmth and protection. It's really simple, just keep adding and subtracting layers to suit the conditions to make sure those hands stay nice and warm and comfortable. And then kind of finally, your outer layer. Much like your clothing system, your outer layer on your clothing system would be, for instance, your Gore-Tex jacket. It's cold, it's wet, it's miserable, your hands are getting wet, <coughs> excuse me. So my top tip would be to throw over the top of whatever layers you've got on your hands at that time, a waterproof shell. Now these generally come in mitten form because A, it's really expensive to make a waterproof glove because of all the seams and the, the kind of the, the, the technologies involved and the, the intricacies involved. It makes them hideously expensive. They do exist. But generally speaking, an outer layer will be in mitt form and that just goes over the top of everything. I'm a massive fan of these. I always keep a set of waterproof mitts in my bag and they'll go over my skin, just over bare hands if it's cold and wet. Uh, they'll go over a base layer, they'll go over the mid layer, they'll go over everything. You can just throw them over the top, keeping your hands dry and also keeping them protected from wind chill is massively advantageous. Your hands will warm up really quickly inside of that waterproof shell, much like when you throw your jacket on over the top of your clothing system when you're out hiking. So that was a very brief overview of the glove layering system. It's really, really simple. It's exactly the same principles as your clothing system. Uh, so you would add and subtract layers as you go through the day, as you go through your activity, as the weather changes, as your altitude changes as well. Uh, and I would always, always, always recommend keeping two or a couple, two, maybe three spare pairs of gloves in your pack as well because if your gloves get wet you you know you're i don't know maybe you, you're sort of thrusting your way up a gully your hands are in deep wet snow they're getting wet and they're gonna lose their ability to keep you warm that's when you want to stick a spare pair on uh, and just be prepared to have the ability to change your layers throughout the day so keep them handy in your pack keep them in a side pocket keep them keep them somewhere you can get to them nice and easy. There's nothing worse than getting cold fingers, trying to fumble around, trying to find your gloves. But much like the clothing system, the glove world has been disrupted by the advent of modern technologies and modern fabrics, much like soft shell. Uh, so, you know, you think about a soft shell jacket, it kind of replaces 
two or three layers within your clothing layering system and that's pretty much the same for gloves. So uh, kind of modern, lightweight, soft shell gloves uh, give a lot of protection, a lot of dexterity. So if you're mountaineering, you're climbing, maybe you're having to uh, use carabiners or ice tools, that kind of thing, uh, you're going to want something lightweight but with really good protection. Um, but needless to say, you can still use a layering system with those gloves. You can still use a liner and then you can still throw over a waterproof gauntlet if it gets really horrible and wet. So that um, tried and tested four layering, four layer system for your hands is, is great for the majority of us. You know, we might just be having a bimble up the Sugarloaf, exploring the Black Mountains and the Bracken Beacons, just doing our general walking and hiking. But there are a plethora of gloves out there that are designed for specific purposes, maybe via ferrata, scrambling, climbing, mountaineering. You know, they're, they're tough, they're pliable, they're dexterous, so you can handle uh, ice tools and climbing equipment. They may have extra thick uh, insulation for, you know, really high altitude stuff where you're up to your elbows in powder snow, all that kind of stuff. It's best to kind of explore the gloves that work best for you. Um, you know, I, I, I see a lot of people buying lightweight soft shell gloves that are designed for tough via ferrata use that look super Gucci, they look fantastic, but just for walking, they're really not up to the job. So make sure you get a glove and a glove system that works best for your activity. And remember, just go out and try it. Try the system, try the layering system, see what works for you. Experience is always the best way to understand what bits of kit work best for you. Okay, uh, that's it. That's the end of my little, uh, my little tutorial today on the uh, glove layering system. I hope you found it useful. Uh, I hope I'm not teaching granny to suck eggs here, uh, but this is just some really basic, simple stuff that will make your time in the outdoors more enjoyable because nobody likes cold fingers. So all of the gloves that we've used in this video uh, will be in the description below if you want to go and uh, have a look at each of them individually on the website. Uh, and always welcome comments and questions. It's always good to hear from you guys. And if you haven't already, why not? Please subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get notified every time Harry posts a new video. He does all the hard work. I just stand here and look like this. Thanks very much for watching. Toodaloo.